All right, so tell me uh, some stories about Fort Seal. Well, one of the things, uh, me and a friend of mine, you know, one of you know, well, we didn't. One of our, one of the guys out there he had a car out there, and so we borrowed his car to go downtown to get some, you know, stuff to bring back, you know, to eat at the, at the station. So anyway, so when we got out of the car, it was just kind of dust dark. I mean, it wasn't dark, but I mean, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't where you'd be recognizing anything. But anyway, a jeep went by, and we had our hands full. And uh, a jeep went by, and it was a, I think it was a lieutenant colonel. Or lieutenant, well, he, anyway, it might have been, a, anyway, somewhere along in there, he was, he was high ranking. But anyway, we didn't salute him, you know, because we couldn't see. He was sitting in a Jeep and the hat and everything was down the level of a Jeep. Thing. And so we didn't salute him, so they just slammed on brakes, and here we were with our food in our hand. Back, back up, you know, and he gets out and wants to know why we didn't salute him. He got mad. So anyway, we, well, we got our hands for <laughs> Well, he wanted to know who we were, our names, you know, and everything, and where our company was, and you know, and everything, barracks and everything. So anyway, he goes over there and calls our, uh, uh, calls our captain over there, you know, and so then he called Wingate. Guy's name was Wingate. It was with him, and he called Wingate down there, you know, to his office. And when Wingate goes down there, and so he was talking to Wingate, wanting to know why we didn't salute. You know, the guy, you know you're supposed to salute the officer when he goes by in a car and all that. Or salute the car. You know, you salute the car if it's got, you know, if it's got a, you know, the star or something on you. And so, anyway, and so he said, uh, and there was somebody with you now. Who was it? He said, he said it was Mayo. I, I ought to just know it was Mayo week. You know? <laughs> and the reason he said that is because about a week before that, there was a bunch of us. You know, we would, you know, when we'd go out to the field to have a shoot, you know, there'd be like maybe a couple of jeeps and then, you know, a couple of smaller trucks and then a bigger truck. But anyway, I was driving a truck that was right behind the jeep that had him in it. And he's the cat, he's the mm-hmm. head of our company, you know, company commander. And he was right in front of me. Well, something, I don't remember what exactly what happened, but anyway, something run out in front of him or something, so the guy slammed on brakes. Well, you can stop a Jeep pretty good, but you can't stop no truck that quick. And I ran right in the back of that Jeep. You could see helmet liners just flying. You know, a helmet liners are when things goes on under your steel pot. But you don't wear your steel pot and doing stuff like we were doing. Yeah, but anyway, helmet liners are just flying all over the Jeep, you know. <laughs> so anyway, I, uh, and so then he come back here, boy, and he was chewing me out. And he was telling me, he said, when we get back, I want to see you down the motor pool. Okay, okay, you know. <laughs> you know. So anyway, we're getting, so those, on the back of a Jeep, you have little things that come out there, they, you know, they come out like this, and that's where you can settle like a water bottle or a gas bottle and strap it on, and that's where the taillights right in that area on, on the Jeep. Well, anyway, when I hit that Jeep, it just flattened them things out, both of them on both sides, blam, we just flattened them out. So when, anyway, we got back to the motor pool, you know, he wanted me, and so the other guy, uh, I had to, the driver, he kind of worked on cars a little bit. So anyway, he said, he said, oh, I'll have, you know, get these things straightened out. So me and him had to take them things off of the Jeep, you know, and heat them things up, you know, and get them all over in a vice, bend them all back around, right? And uh, anyway, get them back, bolt them back on there, you know, and it took us about two nights to get all this done, you know. And so we was just about through it, and I was bolting them things on. We had to put, stu- you know, the stickers back on there, you know, what company and, and uh, all that on there. So we had all the stickers on there, and uh, he comes walking in. He's a captain, you know, head of our company. He come walking in the door there, you know, and I was rolling on a little roll of thing, and frequent. I rolled out, and he said, well, y'all about down, huh? And said, yeah, we about down with it. He said, well, it looks real good. Y'all did a good job. So anyway, that that's the way that went. But And he was, you know, he wasn't but about... I don't think he was about 23, 24 years old. He wasn't much, much older than me, you know. And here I was, had a brother old, a sister old. And it just felt funny, you know, to be calling him yes sir, no sir, and all that kind of stuff. So I wasn't doing it every time, you know. So that's one thing he got mad about. 
I would just say, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> you said you had a meeting a meeting with him about it, right? Yeah, so he called me into his office and this and me about it. And that's what I told him. I said, I don't know, I just feel funny. I said, you're almost my age, you know. And So anyway, he told me, he said, well, I'm going to tell you something. He said, if there ain't nobody else around, he said, it's okay, just <laughs> not call me sir and all that stuff. He said, but if there's anybody else around, he said, go ahead and say so. I said, okay, I agree with that. So, Anyway, that's what it did. And that was about what it, about it was out there, you know, and I had a couple of things out there. And I remember you could stand on one side of that building, the wind would be blowing towards you, and you get on the other side of the building, and the wind would be blowing towards you on the other side. Out there in Oklahoma, boy, that wind just blew. You said you had and to. And it was cold. I got out there in December, see. But it was, by the time we got all the way up to May, it didn't really get high out there. You said you had to clean clean the vehicles? Every after every day and stuff. Oh yeah, when you'd come in, you'd have to, you know, you'd be out shooting. I'd say I had to lay wire lines. We, me and you know a couple other guys, that's what we did. We laid the wire lines and hook up all the wire lines where they could communicate with one another, and then run the wire line over the hill to where they was going to uh, have the shoot at, where they had the lieutenant over there that called in the fire. You know, he'd be over there calling in the fire, mm -hmm. running over here. But anyway, so we just and so after they started shooting, we'd just be sitting there waiting. Or either we would go and take up wire lines of where we were the last, you know, the day before. We'd take those wire lines up mm -hmm. and then come back over. And then these wire lines, we would take them up the next day and go lay some more for another day. So that's the way we did it. Every other day we was kind of ahead of what was going on. But anyway, we just sat over there and do that and and not to come back. And when we'd come, them guys in big old cracks. There's 109 houses, what they were. It looked like a big old tank with a big old muzzle on it. So if it let down in the back, you know, when you'd walk in the back of it. Mm -hmm. And then raise it back up. You didn't go in from the top like you do a tank. But anyway, they uh, they would drive in. So when them guys started bringing them back, see, and there was a bunch of them. There was like four or five of them on, on, on assigned to one thing. Mm -hmm. So when they get back, man, it was hard to get down there with four or five guys running in there walk, doing that work. You couldn't get a truck in there, you know, that wash it. So anyway, we would... Uh, I'd always try to, you know, we'd always try to beat them tracks back, boy, you know, where we could get down the motor food and get ours all washed up before they got in there, because if they got in there, we wouldn't have a chance to get ours done. Mm 